is the all-new BMW X2, now a compact X6. We're going to tell you all about this with the all-new iX2, the all-electric version, and we'll also have the most powerful petrol version, the X2 M35i. For you, with Thomas Nautigefühl in 4K, full screen, full length, let's go. This will be, let's say, the normal X2 version with the M Sport Pack that adds a different graphic here in the lower part. Also, everything then blacked out for the sportier styling. Also, this double kidney here has an optional illumination that looks pretty fancy indeed. New headlamps, you see, it is now more differentiated to the brother, the X1. They both sit on the same platform and are built in Regensburg, Germany, together in the same plant. But definitely, the X2 sets itself more apart now. If you have the electric version, the iX2, here the inside of the double kidney is closed. Otherwise, it would have a more open look. And most obviously, the sportier version, the M35i, has an even sportier look in the front double kidney. We we'll take a detailed look at that one very soon. This color here is called Fire Red, and it's also a very new color. Other than that, the electric version is almost the same in the look, just always this blue ring around the logo. That's where you see that this one here is the EV. And now it gets even more exciting. As I said, what I'm going to tell you in this review counts for all the new X2 versions. And that is, for example, also the new length at four meters, sorry about that, four meters 55 or 179 inches. And that is 19 centimeters or eight inches longer than the predecessor. And even now, five centimeters or two inches longer than the BMW X1. So for the first time, the X2 is longer than the X1. And in comparison to the predecessor version, it has so much gain in length. So it's an even more grown up model now, typical with this floating coupe roof line really strong hip area, making it the compact version of the BMW X6. M Sport Pack adds here the wheel arches in vehicle color, otherwise it would be this um, black plastic as standard, M badge. And then you start with 18 inch and can go up to 21 inch wheels. We'll soon see them with the other vehicle. Here, these ones are 20 inch wheels and they're already in this massive M styling, so pretty cool look. As for the suspension, you get the base suspension or the adaptive M suspension that is then with this adaptive damper that you can control in the drive selector. But even with the base suspension, you will have in the front axle a technology that is taken over from the BMW 3 Series, so from a segment above, so to speak, and that is actually that the front dampening acts accordingly to the impact, if it's like a hard impact or a soft impact, and has these hydraulic cushions. So it is longer, also a little bit higher, a little bit longer wheelbase, and also wider, grown in all dimensions, and also a wider track, both in the front and in the rear. And you can see here this rear design, especially with the tail lamps, which have this arrow styling here now, really spectacular, and a lot of angular shapes, so they try to be really like screaming out, hey, I'm the X2 and I'm really different from the X1. It also always gets this rear spoiler. It will soon even get more dramatic with the rear spoiler. Wait for it. And you can see once again the blue ring around the BMW logo showing the iX2 version. As I said, again, it would look just the same in the rear with the M Sport Pack with the normal petrol or maybe a diesel version if you can get that in your market. Lower part and with M Sport also more dramatic here with this diffuser style. And a very interesting thing is that as for the exhaust graphics, the Autogefühl fake exhaust police was successful once again because here with the new X2, you will either have invisible exhaust or here the all electric version doesn't have one anyway. Just one version will have real exhaust pipes soon to come, but there will never be any fake exhaust actually. As for aerodynamics, you can see a lot of different tweaks if you look in detail actually, and it will be at 0.25 the CD value, so they have also massively improved the aerodynamics if you compare it to the predecessor. One aerodynamic tweak are these air curtains, so here you can really touch that air you know, and feel it and the air goes in there and directs the air alongside the wheel arch. And here you obviously have already seen the turning indicators. They also have this pulsing effect to be a little bit more alive. Some do not like that however. Tell me in the comments if you prefer this kind of 
indicator or the hazard light styling. The main headlamp unit logic is, by the way, LED from base and optionally go then for an adaptive matrix LED. So it has then the cornering, cornering light and also the matrix LED for more high beam performance. And turning indicators in the rear also have this really nice integration into the rest of the tail lamp unit. Overall with the design, I think it's actually quite cool. You can argue about pro and con and this one will split in love and hate. But what I found cool is that they once again found a very unique design for a car in a time where almost all cars look the same. Or what's your take on that? And if you ever wondered how we move those vehicles here in the studio or if we switch the color from red to blue, we have these devices here and so we can also turn the cars around for you to have the best angle, the best shots always. A very cool device, isn't it? And this here is now the most powerful model, the X2 M35i. It also gets an own visual part. First of all, this vehicle color here is called Frozen Party Mao Blue. You can also get it for other models, but also one of the new colors. And I love this matte paint indeed. Then this is equipped with the M Sport Pack Pro in this case. Soon more to the differentiations. First of all, once again, the sporty accentuations in the lower part. Then you can also get the illuminated kidney, but the petrol versions they have, or in general, the internal combustion engine version, they have an open design in here, but it is adaptive. So at the moment, the stuff behind that is closed. And on demand, it opens for more cooling to improve aerodynamics. Here, the M35i version has these horizontal spokes to make it even sportier. And if you went for the M Sport Package Pro, it also adds the extended shadow line. Then you can see everything is blacked out here also with the double kidney. Then the M Sport Pack Pro also adds these black mirror caps here. So an even more sinister look. Once again, this color also looks really impressive in the side profile. And here are the optional, optional 21 inch wheels, the biggest ones that are available. You could also get them for a smaller petrol version, but here is of course more fitting. There is not so much tire dampening left, so you have to think about the comfort then. And maybe you've seen this one has also different brakes. So these are the optional performance brake discs that are also larger. These are also available. Yeah, and maybe you now discovered why I am wearing this shirt here today. Of course, for this week. <laughs> here in the rear, the differentiation M35i is that the rear wing has an additional element on top here that is even a little bit more dramatic in the styling. Lower part then with the M Sport Pack looks actually quite the same, but then what the hell? Look at that. Here I said, no fake exhaust whatsoever. So either they are completely hidden or here in the top sporty version, four <laughs> exhaust pipes and they are for real. This looks like an eight cylinder, although it's just a four cylinder here in the M35i. But here, of course, the most aggressive look you can get for this one. And yeah, when people discover that one on the road, they can maybe mistake it for an X4 or even an X6. What do you think? Let's head to the interior. You have the M Sport Pack. Then you also have the M Colors at the key fob. Then flush door handles, but they still have this. Yeah, this how you close it and this and how you open it. So you still have this haptic feedback and door closing sound. Nice sound. And you can take a look here at the lower parts. So you have this puddle light and when you have the M Sport Pack, then it also has the M logo. Then the inside of the doors here, high grade leather red in black. This color you can pick, it's an option actually here in bright, but you can also get it in dark or usually in the M Sport Pack it would come with Alcantara. I'm soon going to show you that. This is also known from the X1 Harman Kardon sound system as an option and Really solid and good build quality. The lower part here, let's, yeah, that is however just hard pack. I would have wished a softer material for that one. And there's also no felt inside of the door. So this is the only drawback, so to speak. Then you have M Sport Pack M steering wheel with this sportier design. And the seats, they are the special color combination that would only come in the iX2. It's an option. And you have the Veganza seats. This is a high grade leather red, really soft from the cushioning, also perforated. And this color combination, once again, you don't have to go for it and only available in the electric version. The M Sport Pack usually would come with the Alcantara seat. And I can soon show you 
that how it looks like in the most powerful M35i version. This one here, by the way, also available in black, in the oyster tone, or is also in a brown color, so you have different coloring choices. 189, six foot two, my height, and that leaves still some headroom here. It's a very comfortable seating position, so if you go for the Alcantara or the Viganza seats, they're really plush in the bolstering. In this segment, I feel they have the best seating comfort indeed, and they are sporty, these seats. You have good side support that takes weight of the lower lumbar area is really good then the C steering wheel up and down in and out no alternative materials for that one available yet but you still have real buttons and that is good that not everything is hashtag capacitive bs panoramic roof there is one yes however it is a fixed one you cannot open it but there is a shade available for really hot days. This is also about pro and con. So these panoramic roofs that are fixed, they're actually better that you can you know, keep the same headroom and so on. And also some that you can open. I love driving with open top. I'm also a convertible lover. However, <laughs> my local mechanic says either take a convertible or a fixed roof and because these retractable glass roofs, they can start to squeak, they can start to leak. So it might also be a good thing for that respect. What's your take on that? How does it differentiate from the X1 in the interior? First of all, a very modern atmosphere. And then here you have this Veganza as an option also for the dashboard, really soft material. And this lower part either is in this structured form. It feels even more interesting. You can also see that actually how it reacts to the light. Alcantara is also possible there. Soon gonna show you. Ambient light integration is also here. Then you can get different deco elements. And I'm soon going to tell you all about this infotainment system. Here you have this curved display. It is one unit and then split in two different screens. 10.7 on the right, 10.25 on the left. If you read the official BMW material, by the way, don't be confused. They call the right side control display and the left side information display because here just information on the right side you can control something yourself that's their logic i felt always a little bit confusing because everyone talks about the right side as infotainment system and we say infotainment system and you have information display on the left yeah i think that's a little bit confusing or what what do you think here this very cleaned up cockpit overview the only drawback is you don't have separate climate dials i would prefer that you always have to do it here in the screen at least it stays in that position still controlling it while driving is not that easy i still think it's good to have at least the volume control here for example on the steering wheel this would be the m sport pack as standard with alcantara here we also have it here in our m 35i vehicle so alcantara inside the doors then once again the steering wheel but here with more stitching and also with the 12 o'clock marking and alcantara then here on the lower part of the dashboard same also goes for the other side and here now the sport seat with alcantara on the inside high grade leather on the outside from the form it is different to the Others see that here we have the integrated head restraint and if you also have the M Sport Pack Pro together with the M35i, you also have this hole together with the illumination from the M logo. Here in the M35i, cockpit overview, once again with the Alcantara, that would look the same if you go for another version with M Sport Pack. Then you also have these shifting levers here, plus and minus, different decor element. Well, as I said, even if you go for a different version, you can make your interior more look like that and more sporty and more subtle. Digital instruments. Yeah, we're already driving it here at 85 kilometers. No, it's just a demo mode. <laughs> um, but then you can see how they work. And you can see the head-up display will be a proper one projected into the windscreen. BMW OS 9, new operating system based on Android now actually. And you have this new home screen with zero layer, so to speak. So you have the map in the background and then you have this on top of the part. Um, here, by the way, this is a visualization of the X1 because this is here still a hand-built prototype model early production stage. This will, of course, then show an X2 very soon. Then you have also this main menu like this. Apple CarPlay or Android Auto integration looks like this, always wireless. What is also available is this Air Console, so you can have different games 
also for example this card racer here um, yeah maybe like for the electric version during a charging stop or for the kids while they wait or something um, yeah um, <laughs> why not this gaming air console is actually an option that you have to pay for monthly and that has been in a huge discussion recently so what they have skipped now they came with, up with the idea to have Apple CarPlay and Auto monthly or with seat heating monthly. Then, of course, customers raged and that was the correct reaction and they skipped that now. However, what they still do or now will offer monthly is this digital service like the Air Console, but also the live traffic updates when you don't have a root set. They still work also from stand equipment when you have a root set. But option is that they also work when you're just you know, like driving without a root set and maybe have some information in there. And there are also more other services, but all digital IDs that you have to pay for extra. This is this new business model by car manufacturers that they want some monthly money from you for additional things. Yeah, I don't think it's a nice trend for the customer. Um, then again, here what they offer an option here is not something you would necessarily need. Hello, hello. Oh, it must be God calling, right? <laughs> yeah, I just have it here for you to light up the interior a little bit. Not burn it, of course, just put some light on it. Here, look at that, the middle console, cup holders. I always criticize them also in the X1 because they are not adaptive. They need to be better here because small bottles fly all over the place. Then in the very front, this is a seatbelt holder for your smartphone, basically. You, um, and then you also have these holes in the back part. This is the ventilation for the inductive charging. That's a very good thing because then finally the phones do not overheat. Here in this middle part, integrated shifting lever. There's no manual or something, always like this with the uh, DCT. And then you have this volume jog, still a manual button. This upper armrest here just folds to the driver's side. There's hardly any space underneath. However, you have more underneath this floating console. This is taken from the big BMW iX, this whole design. What do you think? I mean, it looks cool, but is it also practical? Rear seats here, the inside of the door, soft touch, leather red on top, and also this even in tree structure in the lower part. So that's a bit good build quality, actually. Then you can see you have this recess here at the back part of the seats in, in hard pack, but it only works for tall people in the rear when you would put the seat up. So here, when the seat is all the way down for my position in the front, then there's hardly any leg room. I would need to put the seat up and then I could fit my knees in this recess. Then it would work, actually. The materials of the seat, one thing, is really soft and plush. It's a good seating comfort, but for tall people in the rear, it's not ideal, neither for the leg room nor for the headroom. It kind of works closely, but there is this slider here for the panoramic roof in the rear. So in the X1, you have a little bit more headroom there, for example. So, yeah, more or less works, but not the best for the rear comfort as for tall people. Then, when you open this one, you have cup holders, and they are more adaptive than the ones in the front. I can tie right the inside of the rear doors as well, here in the M Sport Pack, in our M35i vehicle, and also inside of the rear seats. Also looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Before we open the trunk, let me show you two interesting details. Come closer. First of all, here the rear view camera is placed right here. Yes, is it not hidden somewhere? But then this tiny thing next to it, this is the cleaning function then actually for the rear view camera. And then here we can fold or flip the logo to open the hatch. Electric hatch is standard. Now at 560 liters, that's 90 liters more than before. So massive upgrade as for the trunk because they've increased the length width a meter of 40 inches and the length even is just a little bit less than a meter of 40 inches so that's actually very well usable other than that this one here being the electric version also for the 1.5 liter mf this is a little bit limited then so you have charging cable here underneath but then that's it and also the whole area is a little bit higher soon i show you the pure petrol four cylinder where you have even more trunk and of course you can fold the seats individually one 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 like this let's flip the logo one more time for the pure petrol engine here we go and if you know electric version and also not the m have version in the three cylinder here with the four cylinder you have more first of all you have 
a little bit lower cover, so a little bit more space and also way more space underneath. And what I also want to show you here, this is a good feature. You fold this open and then it stays here, you know, it's fixed. This is a really good possibility to have massive more storage underneath and then you can fold that down again. So also good build quality in these details. As for engines, there will be no plug-in hybrid for the X2. But you have two different petrol engines, 1.5 liter three cylinder, two liter four cylinder, also two liter four cylinder diesel, the most powerful petrol engine we're soon going to show you. And then is also the iX2, the all electric version, either rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. Here in this all wheel drive version is the acceleration figure of 5.6 seconds. It has no frunk obviously and the battery size at 65 kilowatt hours net that is not too large same with the ix1 and that will only lead to a range of about 350 kilometers or 220 miles so more a city suv indeed recharging time 29 minutes from 10 to 80 percent state of charge let's now check out the m35i under the hood of the M35i 2 liter 4 cylinder turbo petrol engine with either 300 horsepower in the EU spec or 317 horsepower in the US spec. Acceleration figure for the EU 5.4 seconds, so 0.2 seconds quicker than the all wheel drive electric version. So, this is an also the quicker one. All wheel drive, however, then with the front wheel bias, so to speak. That's why it also gets a differential lock in the front to get that power on the ground. So we said it's basically a compact BMW X6, but what I found here during this review is that for the BMW X4, it becomes really hard to exist now. Yeah, of course you can get the six cylinder there still, that would be one main argument, but for the offering of space and for the looks and so on, for the feature it offers, the X2 makes it really tough for the X4 now. Which version would I go for? Since the all electric one is basically city EV only, yeah, maybe if you have that purposeless use case. Other than that, I think here the M35i, of course, is still the most desirable version from the looks, of course, most sinister and also most powerful in the driving then overall. Plug in hybrids will only be offered for the X1, not for the X2. Which version would you go for? Color and trim. And which engine would you choose for the X2? Tell me in the comments. And now check out more content like the BMW X1 or the X4.